Hi guys, it's Dayana. Welcome back to my channel. If you're not familiar with who I am, I am a streamer on Twitch and I do lots and lots of Skyrim modding. I have almost 900 mods with a pretty stable game. And here on YouTube is where I normally do modding tutorials. So today's modding tutorial, we're going to be getting into Beth I and I, also known as Beth Any. Now you can call I and I files I and I or any, it really doesn't matter which way you pronounce them. So first and foremost, what is Beth I and I? Beth I and I is a really cool exterior application in which you can use to control your I and I files. Why is this important and why is this good? A lot of people don't know how to directly edit their Skyrim I and I file and it's overly complicated to them. A lot of people don't even know how to get to the Skyrim directory folder and <laughs> Beth I and I is just overall better because you can pretty much control most things going on with your any files which is very 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 important. So for example if you're having FPS issues, if you're having really bad lag in your game, what can you do? People ask me this all the time. The first thing that I normally tell them is download Beth I and I and lower the quality of their settings. Let's get into my desktop so I can visually show you guys kind of the application and, and how to navigate it. Okay, so here we have Beth I and I. So you can control your resolution, you can control windowed mode, borderless, FXAA, always active, V-Sync, lock frame rate, FPS, etc, etc. Now, you can customize your presets here. So let's say that you're in Ultra and your PC is having a very hard time with the FPS, your performance is very, very bad. What would I recommend? Going to high or medium. So pretty much, you know, you can just click each of these. Mine, I personally put on low because I stream Skyrim with almost 900 mods. I encode and I stream from one PC that's four years old. So mine are low and then I, they're customized based off of the low settings. So pretty much you can control your screenshot directory as well. It's very awesome. You can control your intro music, uh, etc, etc. In terms of gameplay, you can have control over these types of things. I don't even know what the hell this is, to be honest. <laughs> interface, dialogue, subtitles, you can control the subtitles uh, in terms of detail. So if you notice you're having issues with your water and it's reflecting objects but it's getting glitched or whatever and you just want better performance in general, I've kind of noticed that turning these things off makes my game look better and the reflecting of the objects was very glitchy, it would like flash in the water. Yeah, you can control the water area and the details section from here. In addition to this, you can change the decal quantity if you want god rays. I personally don't. Also, look at the performance cost here. It literally tells you the performance cost. So 7%, 8%, 10%. So by having none on, we're saving a lot of performance. Um, my field of view is 120. So I personally like to have my FOV be 120. This is actually great because you can set your preferred field of view in Beth I and I so that you never ever ever have to open up the console and type FOV 120 ever again. You can have your field of view stay the same consistently and throughout everything if you just set it to whatever you want it to be in here in the field of view section under detail. With particles, this is what it says, set the amount of particle effects. You can manually type a custom value. I have a lot of my settings on the lowest again because of performance and because I want my PC to be able to encode this to Twitch without dog shit quality and without encoding lag. Uh, depth of field, obviously. Interior god rays, blah blah blah. Anamorphic lens flare, what does this do? Uh, it gives us a performance cost. Disable gore, who in the hell would disable that? Toggles lens flare, lens flares piss me the hell off, hate them. Shadow resolution, mine is lowest right now just based off of performance. Look at the performance cost, dude. Sets the resolution of shadows. Like, this is insane. This is- it, it goes 10%. Like, hell no. Hell no. Shadow bias, I uh, turned kind of low, just for the sake of it. Yeah, I have this on the lowest two for performance. Exterior draw distance, 2800. Uh, now you can remove the shadows, but keep in mind, if you do remove the shadows, it will remove uh, pretty much every shadow from your game, and it will look very, very bad. You won't even have shadows in your main menu screen. You won't even have shadows in your loading screens. It'll look really janky and it might just end up being too dark or too light, depending. Uh, you can have tree shadows. I personally have them off because my shadows in my game right now are very glitched and they're very annoying. Uh, land shadows, that's going to be 1% performance. Again, if you don't stream this game and you're just gaming and you have a pretty solid rig, like if I didn't stream my game, I would have all like everything on max like, and it would be totally fine. 
but uh, for the sake of everything, you know, four-year-old PC, et cetera, streaming it and coding it, you know, whatever. I maximized all of my all of my settings and whatnot. Ambient occlusion we have on here. So view distance is pretty important. So with our objects, we can increase our object fade. So what is an object fade? An object fade is how far an object fades, right? So let's say like there's a lantern. This is gonna be your object fade, pretty much like it fading into the distance. Keep in mind that the object fade will actually in turn have a performance cost, which is why mine is so low because I don't want the performance to be that high. Uh, this is gonna be your actor fade distance. So like if I'm standing here and I see an, an NPC actor here, this will be their fade distance. So you can set this to be higher, et cetera, et cetera. The NPCs, if you see their heads are just disappearing or floating, you might wanna move this up a little bit. Item fade, I turned up more than halfway because I noticed that a lot of my item fades were pretty bad. I might experiment with this again. This is going to be a part of our log, which is our load distance. Item fade is, is pretty important because sometimes you'll notice if you're walking around and you see something in the distance, like for example, you know, some sort of a, a fire, the fire can be floating simply because you're not close enough and it is then showing you the closer you get to it, it loading in if that makes sense, right? So you are simply not close enough and this is the item fade distance. So the higher you have it, the more you'll be able to see these things from a distance from afar. Now grass fade is very, very important for me. I noticed at one point that I was walking around Whiterun and my grass was around me, but I looked in the distance over the hill and there was no grass, it looked awful. So what did I do? I simply found the grass fade section in Beth I and I and moved it all the way up. So now when we look further into the distance, there will be grass that is all around there. Now light fade is light fade distance. I you know, haven't really played around too much with this one. I don't really care about it, to be honest with you. Now I have my object detail fade low just for performance and just for the sake of me streaming this game. When I get a new PC, all my settings will be a lot higher because I'll be having a rig that, you know, can be really, really good at encoding and be really, really good at gaming and I won't have to worry so much about stressing out this PC. Now, this is the distant object detail. So you can customize these things here. This is just gonna be your maximum distance for lots. Now I have mine really freaking low right now just because my own personal preference of the view distance. <laughs> I'm just really trying to go for better performance and everything as I've specified before. Now under visuals, you can control gamma and brightness. Now I don't actually recommend changing any of these values because anything that you do want to change in this regard, I believe should be done through your ENB or through your reshader. I would not mess with any of these things here, particularly remove grass. I don't understand who'd want to remove grass. Hey, nice background. Let's go. A grass diversity. So this is going to increase the maximum diversity of grass types, you know, so you're going to be having more grass types with it. Also grass density is pretty important. If you don't want your grass to be like super, super dense and just very, very thick, then you can decrease the density of it. I also would recommend having grass wind speed onto D default instead of none. If you're on low settings, I think it will default to none. Make sure that you have it on default so that your grass actually will be swaying a little bit in the wind. Now my treat detail fade is low because again, performance. <laughs> Far off tree distance is the lowest, again, performance. Now dynamic trees and tree animations are important for me. Tree animations work very, very well with 3D trees and plants because if you don't actually have tree animations on, I believe, then your trees won't move with the wind. Whereas if you have tree animations, they will then in turn be moving with the wind, which obviously is very immersive, etc., etc. Now the final part to Beth I and I is this. So this is a more advanced tool. So what can you do here? All right, let's say that I want to go and change the water section. So this is again more advanced. If you don't know what you're doing here, don't. <laughs> Just don't use it, okay? You don't, you don't want to break your game. You don't want to ruin shit. So let's say that I want to edit like the water shader or something. The setting is one. Now, I don't know what this means. We can change it, right? So you can change pretty much every section of every file in your INI. But anything that you want to alter, you never really have to go directly to the Skyrim INI file again. You can just edit all of these things through Beth INI, right? Like you can find anything that you're looking for and you can save it to be that. And then when you're done, it says keep changes. Do you want to keep the changes that you've made? Clicking no will revert your INIs back to the way they were. If you want to save your changes, you hit yes. If you want to revert, you hit no. Application closes. 
and that's it. So again, Beth I and I is a very, very important application for anybody who plays Skyrim, especially modded Skyrim. It can help you a lot in terms of performance, it can help you a lot in terms of customizing your game visually uh, and everything like that. It's very, very wonderful, it helps me a lot, and it allows me to be able to really hone into my settings and customize them and make my game work well performance-wise and work well visually with what I'm going for. I hope that this video could help anybody out there who wants to adjust visuals without the complications of going to your Skyrim INI file directly. This is a very, very easy and simple way. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. I really do hope that this was helpful and I really do hope that you guys enjoyed it. Have a very awesome night or day. Thank you again for watching. Have a good one. Bye!